Yeah. Welcome everybody to the final finance and performance meeting for the year and welcome to everyone watching by live stream. Can I ask that that we all stand and Councillor Wong will read the council prayer. Almighty God, as members of the Rangitiki District Council, we give thanks for all the good things of our district and the advantages we enjoy. We pray that you will give us wisdom and guidance as we conduct the affairs of this meeting. We pray for all the communities and the districts, the district we represent, help us to be fair and honest in our discussions and help us to work together in unity for the welfare of all your people. Amen. Amen. Item number two is the call for apologies. Don't believe there are any. Well, uh, can I ask for someone to move they be accepted? Move. <laughs> 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 Councillor Wilson, <laughs> Councillor Moore. All those in favour? Against, carried. Conflict of. Oh, sorry, I have not been notified of any public forum. Yeah. Item four is conflict of in interest declarations. Does anyone have any conflicts they'd like to declare now? If not, normal pr procedure is if we're discussing matters that are a that a conflict arises, please raise it at that time. Uh, item five, order confirmation of order of business. I'll take it as listed in the order paper with no changes. I heard talk about um, Karen today. Yes, just a message from the CE, please. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. It's just for um, councillors to note that uh, our normal governance administrator is not with us. She has COVID. Um, and kindly we have Karen helping us out today. Um, if I'd just ask for your patience, um, as Karen is not used to how we run um, meetings, and, and so uh, I'll sometimes ask you to slow down if, if I'm finding that Karen, um, it's a really important for us to get an accurate record in our minutes, and I'd rather go slowly, it might, I'd rather recommend you go slowly and, and then we catch her appropriately. Um, I've also asked the Chair if I could uh, uh, if you have a motion or a proposed action that you could write it down, um, and we'd provide that to Karen for, for inputting into the, uh, into the screen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So moving to item number six, confirmation of minutes. Uh, I'm to move, Madam Chair. Oh, could I just ask her? Mm. Um, I'm present as Councillor Jared Corkin and apologies as Councillor Corkin. Can I ask staff to follow that up and confirm? I can confirm I was not present. Yeah. Take your yeah. front sheet, thank you. You were present not via Zoom? No. Thank you. Um, and then I have a small addition to make on page nine, um, item 8.1. Mr. Toombs advised that council assets are valued every three years. I'd just like to add, please, roading and three waters were valued at June 2022. So, your Worship moved that the Turing correct record as, as amended. As amended. Yeah. Councillor Carter, would you like to second that? Thank you very much. All in favour? Aye. Against? Thank you. Oh, follow up item, item number seven, follow up actions from previous meetings. Uh, we've had a couple of actions 
from our previous meeting um, that are now closed. Are there any any questions to that report or any other further actions you'd like to look into? Okay, can I ask that the follow-up items be received? Thank you, Councillor Carter. Thank you, Councillor Carkin. All those in favour? Against carried. Item number eight is my chair's report. Happy to take it as read. Um, I just, um, with the benefit of being able to think about it since, I just think I did miss out a wee paragraph and would just also like to add. Um, and acknowledge the extensive effort by the CE and the ELT to ensure a positive workplace culture is part of our point, point of difference here in the Rangitaki District Council. Uh, any questions to my report? Councillor Carter seconded. We're going okay? Yep. <laughs> Carried. Carried. All in favour? <coughs> Item number nine, reports for information. 9.1 is the financial shop snapshot, November 2020. Thank you, Hillary, for your work. Mr. Toombs, are you going to take us through this? Yeah, I'll just, um, by way of brief introduction, the um, overall picture is fairly similar to the picture that's been presented in previous months. I think page 17 of the agenda papers shows that uh, our operating statements are fairly close to budget with some variances that are explained in the following pages. But um, just happy to take questions. Councillor Lawson. Uh, yes, thank you. Just um, drawing your attention to words used on page 15 at um, 3.3.2 with regards to the sale of properties in Bulls. I just note the commentary, the gross proceeds of sale was planned to help offset the associated construction costs of Tomato B. Could I just seek a little bit of clarity as to was, does that mean it's no longer? Or is that just a wording misuse? It is a wording kind of um, anomaly which will tidy up um, in future reports. So initially, the proceeds were planned, and that is still the case. They are being used to offset that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. One further thing for me, if I, uh, if I may, Chair. Uh, funding for unbudgeted expenses, item 4, 4.1, regarding the emergency works, um, which I acknowledge we've been made well aware that these uh, costs were to, to come at the expected far rate of 84%. Um, I note that it will either be debt funded or offset against underspends and other project budgets. My question is, when would we see that as being a possibility of a reality as to whether or not that can be offset against other under underspends? Is that something that comes at an end of year wash up or when we get that? A, a bit of both. As, we, as some of these projects near finalisation, if we can identify that they have come in under budget, we'll notify the committee. Uh, and it's uh, they may not arise, but it's, should they arise, then they will help mitigate the impact of this. Yes, um, just regarding the council's question, if I may add some to that. Um, firstly, uh, you will see a paper also in today's pack regarding the roading capital budget. And that talks a little bit about um, the, uh, <clears throat> the funding that we were unable to deliver in the last financial year, which is something that this is referring to. Um, secondly, um, our head of PMO, Adina, uh, and I met with his worship yesterday, um, and we'll discuss that at, at full council, 
Um, there have been changes uh, in terms of prioritisation of, uh, of roading, uh, in terms of which roading projects that are within the LTP may be moved or brought forward. And one of those examples is here in Martin. Uh, I, can't, I don't look off this too, don't know where road or Galpins Road, but um, on the way to the, the BNC dams. Uh, and I've reminded Adina for when she works with her roading team, which she's not formally done, so I, I shouldn't say I've reminded her, I've asked Adina to make sure that those changes are presented to Assets and Infrastructure Committee so our councillors are aware of those changes and the logic behind them. Yeah, further to that, it's not only being made aware of, you, you, you have the responsibility as governors uh, to approve. Um, if something, just because something sits further forward in an LTP, you still have to be able to approve um, a change in, in process and priority. That's, that's your responsibility. So that's where the question is, but we'll talk a bit more about that in council. Um, these emergency works are unbudgeted for um, because due to adverse weather effects, I believe has been an ongoing thing over the last few years because of unforeseen weather events. So should we not budget? I see there's no, there's no, it was always going to be un, because it's unexpected, but if it's been happening for the past number of years, should we not have some allowance and a budget for it to, to so the costs lie in the period that they do fall? <laughs> we could put provisional budgets in there. Um, they'd be best to be, guesses. To be considered um, probably when we could. Yeah. yeah thank you, Councillor. It's a really good question and issue because um, quite some time ago, Council actually put in 300,000 a year in terms of voting budgets as, um, to build a resilient fund. Um, the reality is that that 300,000 doesn't go very far. 2015, our damage from the 2015 event from memory was 12.5 million. So the other complication is um, government continually changes its stance. You know, so for some of the emergency work, um, we've been funded at um, a part of Turakina Valley. We did a deal that was funded in 2015 at 100%. And some other areas funded at lower rates. So it's a guesstimate, but would we, could we be advised? If we certainly had, we're cash rich. <laughs> Uh, operating in a positive position um, uh, on an annual rates basis, then no pressure you'd, you'd look to do that. You probably don't have that luxury at the moment. And if I might just make another comment following that, um, if, if there is an emergency event as there was uh, last year and we have to spend two million on addressing that emergency event, then that really takes two million worth of work resources from the budgeted plan to the unbudgeted plan. So collectively, we're still doing the, the same work. It's just on different areas. Yeah. Any other questions? Councillor Lowry. Well, um, just regarding 3.1, capital expenditure at 6.5 so far this year. Um, it's about six months. What's the forecast expenditure, capital expenditure for the second half of the year? Okay, um, I will just, just point out before I answer that already, 3.2, um, item 2, the 6.4 is after being netted off against a million dollars worth of proceeds, so it's actually 7.5 at yes. the end of um, November. Uh, typically, we have a slow month in December, and most of the outdoor work is conducted between January and April, so it's, it's, it certainly isn't flatlined. So some areas, is like uh, IT and fleet, it's pretty much steady yeah. but the big the big work the outdoor work is generally yeah. more um, focused on January to April and I, I don't think we've got our phase into them budgets quite right yet yeah. so that there are some differences in there which we'll catch up on as we go through the year subject to emergency events so are you saying there's going to be quite um, um, a large um, yeah. money, amount of money left in the budget um, uh, money left in the budget uh, I might 
um, refer some of that to the PMO team as to how they're going to, whether they think they'll be at the end of the financial year. But yeah, this is subject to emergency events. We do expect a, a, a significant increase in the uh, in the spend. Um, I think to, again, to further from what Dave's been saying, um, firstly, uh, we have a paper um, later on roading and where we think the final capital position will be. Um, the former council made it my number one priority to deliver our capital program. Uh, and so I'm working with Adina and her leadership to do as best we can to achieve the numbers we've given you. Um, one thing I would add, and, and Adina has, has just reminded me that um, when considering emergency roading works, while we do get uh, an increase in the FAR rate, so we're actually getting more value effectively, or, or council contributes less, it is significantly more inefficient because there's no planning, there's no resource planning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, what you would normally see as a piece of work is scheduled maintenance versus an emergency repair. The two are very, very different. And quite often with emergency repairs, there's a patch job first that just gets traffic moving and then there's a design for a more thorough. So it's it's quite a quite a, a lot a lot more inefficient. Less efficient, whatever. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So do I have a motive for the receipt of that report, please? Um, just before you I'll be done. Any other questions? Um, in terms of the, the vehicle you brought up, the vehicle um, pool replacement, etc. A number of these vehicles are also vehicles that we provide for the shared services staff, aren't they? And that's part of the agreement within that process, isn't it? Thank you. This time round, can we have a mover for receipt of that report, please? Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Seconded by Councillor Carkin. All in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Mm. Moving to page 28, item 9.2, the future Treasury position. Thank you, Dave, for the report. Who would like to speak to it, please? I'll introduce it if that's okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, I'd like to think the, the paper's just to a large extent self explanatory. I would just like to emphasise section 1.3 that uh, this is intended to be something we continue to bring to this committee because there's a, an awful lot of unknowns about the reforms. And rather than wait till we know everything, what we, what we want to do is to start, not start, to start reporting how we're overseeing these and the known impacts of some of these changes. So this isn't intended to be a standalone once-off document. Each committee meeting will be an update. Some updates will be minimal because there'll be no new information, but we will continue to provide these updates to the committee. And um, section 2.1, some of the known impacts won't be known for some time. So it's, it's important that we just keep working towards likely scenarios and outcomes and understand the impacts of them. Um, yeah, I think there was one other thing following on from the Mayor's last comment about the standard overheads that's going to be, yes, yeah, section 4.15, the first, first bullet point does talk about cost savings in the business unit activities. So that's what we're working through. The, as our fleet reduces, then the amount of overheads that get allocated will come down. So we're working through all these possibilities. Your Worship. Um, yeah, thank you. First of all, uh, thank you very much for the, this report. Um, it's probably, you're dead right, it's a report that will need to be built on as we acquire knowledge. Um, in terms of 4.15, um, we will be protected by no worse off funding from the entity for the two to three years. It's a fixed term, yes, yeah. yeah so, so it will tend to hide a, a difficulty for us going forward. Um, 
the report really well uh, puts out, uh, raises the um, spotlight on uh, stranded overheads, as you say. But should we be starting to have to understand also the stranded overheads in terms of shared service? So, for instance, from um, we do have a shared service arrangement with Manor Two District Council, and they and they will probably be hit with more significant stranded overheads than we will because they've got those that staffing that they've provided. Okay. Does that? to be a discussion with you, Peter, between Chief Executives and the operation of the board. Um, any thoughts on how that plays out? Um, it's been... Um, the, the work that's being done from a <coughs> HR perspective is being managed by uh, by Manawatu, um, but it has an oversight from Sharon in terms of our HR, so we're making sure that that the staff that are impacted have access to all of the right information, etc. So there's a kind of belt and braces approach. With regards to stranded overheads, um, no, because I don't believe there are... I, I, I'm catching this, but I haven't analysed it, but I, I can't, off the top of my head, consider what capital assets are held by Manawatu uh, in regards to the delivery of the shared services contract. We just talked about vehicles, but aren't they? The, the, the buildings are mostly um, uh, are ours, and obviously there are some staff that work for one or two um, at a higher level, but that would be quite minor, I would imagine. And the only other comment is around, um, we are assuming in terms of the sections around 5.5, 5.6, etc., we're assuming full repayment of debt. Um, but I do want to absolutely flag the issue that um, this will be a decision by Treasury, and that makes me nervous in itself. But also, I suspect that Treasury may look at whether they actually. Um, claim the depreciation funding that we've attributed to these assets over time. So where the depreciation has been fully spent, no problem at all, but where the depreciation account against an asset is, is sitting in positive, they may actually want that as well. So we could have literally cash money taken out um, as well as debt repaid. Um, just an update, which I would, would follow from His Worship's comments um, that I'll provide the committee. Um, so this, this week I received an email from uh, the Department of Internal Affairs, as did every other Chief Executive, um, and it, within it, it had a, a, a clear statement, which we have referred to in the past, but this is the first time I've actually seen it in writing, and that is um, the Enacted Water Services Entities Bill which is an enacted bill, is not yet an act until it has royal assent, uh, provides for the Department of Internal Affairs to have oversight of local government organisations' significant water-related decisions during the establishment period. So we are currently in the establishment period. And what Dave has highlighted uh, in the past is that at some point, the capital decisions that are made by council on three water assets will, will need to go through some other process, which we're not clear of yet. The email went on to say, tomorrow we'll be sharing how we intend to give effect to these powers in a way that makes it easy for local government organisations, councils, to comply. We welcome your feedback to make sure we've got the right approach. Um, Tomorrow's been and gone, I haven't seen anything yet, um, but Dave and I are being vigilant to see, make sure that if there is something, we, we, we will report to you. But it uh, adds a new layer of, of approval uh, as anticipated, but it's now becoming more formal. Through the chair. Mm -hmm. This effectively could mean, for instance, if we were to purchase, to purchase a farm to dispose waste water for Bulls Martin, DIA could say no, or provide 
effectively say no. Yep. They could say that it wouldn't be within the plans of the entity um, and you're not to proceed. Now that would put the whole thing in a really, really complex position because the entity then becomes the decision maker totally uh, for the next three to four years. That's in the Act. So, so that's, if you find me, um, question regarding that, could DIA say, okay, we'll fund it? Um, it couldn't be funded by, by DIA, in my opinion, um, and the entities won't take effect until for a couple of years. Um, I think they'd just stall it. And you could be then get the situation where Horizons say, well, you're, in, you're breaching your agreed pathway to consent by not doing this. We all have a discussion around um, possible fines. It, it, this is going to be the council, this is going to be the horrible, horrible position we're in for the next three years. Through you, through you Chair, if I may, mm. um, we won't be the only council. Oh, yeah. We'll be in exactly the same position and many will be in a worse position than, than we will be. But the one thing to still remember is that the entities still need to comply. At whatever stage that may be, they are still required to comply. Um, so our sites throughout the Rangitiki will still need to comply, and they may be the delivering agent. And there's a lot of work to be done to figure that out. So the work still has to be done somewhere along the line. Okay. When do we start standing up and saying, we're planning this work, let's just carry on and get on and do it, you know? It's... Um, I know we've got all these rules and regulations and other entities coming, you know, down at us. But, you know, there's previous councils have set a plan that's in the long-term plan, for better or for worse. And I think, you know, we've just got to give our staff the go-ahead and just keep keep going. Well, at the moment, we don't, boom, boom. We don't, <laughs> we don't have a no, so... Mm. Um, I guess that those causes of action may be in front of us. Councillor Lauda. Um, would, um, with funding the debt that the council has on three wheels already, the council's made decisions to put the bore in, for example, um, could DIA then turn around and say, well, we don't like that decision, we don't think it's a good one, we won't fund that debt for that item. Um, is, is that a possibility? Mm. Your Worship, sorry. This is why I'm concerned about where Treasury will sit. Um, for instance, if you take a council that has built, for example, say a wastewater plant and it didn't perform, that sits on their debt and they build another one uh, and they add to that debt my guess is that um, Treasurer would say, well, we're only de funding the debt that for the existing systems. So the, um, I suspect there'll be a huge number of very, very tough decisions around what they're prepared to fund in terms of repaying loans. Mr. Speaker, would you like to comment? I would highlight that that indicate well, the, the, the email I got from the DIA is the, 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 the future act, um, which will be an act, um, the DIA having oversight of significant water related decisions. Sorry, I don't know what significant is, yeah. I don't know what oversight is, yeah. um, but I would, if you're asking to answer your question directly, Councillor. I would find it highly improbable that a project that's already started, particularly the one with such significance and that's been well intentioned in our long term plan, I would find it quite improbable that they would reverse that decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
always apply for the, for the money through no worse off <laughs> funding. Um, sorry. Councillor yeah, Um I think the, we, we run the risk here as a result of a, a lot of unknowns, as, as Mr Biggs has said, um, that we're going to end up boxing shadows. We're going to be finding, finding situations that we don't know and we, we cannot foresee without having a, a full picture. So what we'll need to do is, is almost be aware of that, but also proceed in, in, a, in a confident way, but also flagging these issues. Um, but I, I fear that as a result of um, this worry or, or concern we may have around what, what it's going to look like, that we could actually stand still and stop. And, and that would be the, the worst thing here. So I, I appreciate the, the sentiment, but I do also just want to, to kind of speak to the committee about the fact that we do have a lot of work to do and we shouldn't be pausing or stopping as a result of this unknown, as well as almost to, to Greg's point. No, I'm sorry, you wish it. Absolutely agree. Mm. We push on and box on it until we're told something can't happen. Um, but it's also very important. A lot of these decisions might actually be made by the entity, not by government. You have to look at them as separate businesses in their own right. That's why it is incredibly important that we get our voice in those discussions. Any other queries or questions? Just, just a, a, a um, question around the um, depreciation funding um, and the, the potential risk that's being highlighted by its worship. Is, is that something that we would look to bring into this report as well? Yeah, so I think that's, that's touched upon in section 5.3. Sorry. In the, in the italics there. Um, so in, a, in its simplest form, if all of our three waters related assets are taken over, then it shouldn't be an issue. If they start slicing and dicing and picking <coughs> which assets they want and don't want, then we need to start seeing how they're going to drill down into what, what's debt funded, what's got depreciation bank next to it. At this stage, I think uh, the chief executives pointed out the word significant. Um, We've not yet been told that our asset register will be sliced and diced. Um, but it's one of the things on, as, as I said earlier on, this paper is going to come to the committee each month and it will be one of the, the um, known matters that, that you're under constant attention. Yeah. I just have a, um, just a question about the um, fees and charges for the three was I just was trying to reconcile with myself what they might be. Can I take that on notice and oh I'll thank you very much. Yeah. Or I'll just an example. Yeah. yeah. It'll be um related to some usage as opposed to um oh, sorry. I could drill down as we're talking but um, page four, I mean, item 4.4, I was just, the fees and charges for, for three waters, I was trying to think what that might be, an example of those. So we currently have um, um, char charges for use greater than, I can't think what it is, per litres per day. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we have, so where a property, um, where staff consider a property might be a high usage, we will install right. a water meter, so swimming pools, orchards, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we'll install a meter, and within our fees and charges, there is an amount of excess usage. Right, yeah. thank you very much. No, that um, answers that, thank you. Okay, no more questions, then can I ask that report be received, please? Councillor Carter. Second, Councillor Lamorne. All those in favour? Um, Against carriage. Item 9.3. 
report to no for November 2022. Are there any questions or discussion around that report? If I may introduce yes. it, thank you, Chair. Yeah, so um, very similar profile to what we've reported in pro previous uh, committee meetings. One thing I would just point out was when we presented this paper last committee meeting, we did add, add a second recommendation, which is shown on page nine of these uh, committee papers that are inadvertently not attached to this report. So page nine of the, the minutes of the last report, the last meeting showed that we added a, a separate um, recommendation the council notes the, the um, divergence from treasury management policy so I'd, I'd suggest adding that recommendation into this paper as well as, an, as a standing kind of second recommendation right okay. yeah. copy and paste it from page nine I think oh okay so it, it reads council notes in section Section 2.2. Section 2.2. Okay, so you can just um, say that now. Yeah. Uh, Page 9. Uh, Council notes in section 2.2. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Please go, sorry. <clears throat> the explanation why the current account balance as per the Treasury management policy has been exceeded and just that capital CNA for current accounts. Treasury and management. Or treasury? Yes, treasury management. Apologies for that. Right. Any questions? Yeah, question on, on debt two point four. The interest rates are they fixed? Okay. Can I just ask a general question, if I may, Chair? And I don't know if this is the spot to do it, but I'll raise it. With our upcoming discussions of our annual plan and our rating position, is there any significant decisions that you believe are going to come from central government that will have an impact on any of those discussions that you're not aware of? Is, or will all these, some of these decisions, particularly relating to three waters and some of these other things, going to ha happen after that discussion? We have our LTP plan coming. I'm just wondering about the assurances of the discussion, the surety, I guess, of the discussion that we will be able to make clear decisions around that position, particularly on our operating expenses. I don't know if I'm clear on that, but no. Sorry, I don't understand the question. Sorry. I see what you're getting at. Essentially, there could be some very big decisions that come out that change our operating levels. And the biggest one would probably be um, under Mokka Katai because um, they're under substantial pressure. Um, and how they try and rebuild their income um, will be important in terms of things like EV vehicles. There'll be announcement come out of there. But for instance, if they change their far rate, which they could do, that has a very significant effect. But we can't plan for them. Yeah, I'm just, if I may, um, Chair, I'm just trying to get my head around the degree of confidence that we're going to go into these discussions. Um, do you do you foresee us now as a status quo at the moment, where, where business as usual going forward, forward to have those these discussions coming up for LTV? There's nothing, no, you've got no alarm, little alarm bells ringing in your head about anything that could trip us up. I mean, Richard the Bears may have raised one, but was concerned about the speed of some of these decisions that are going to come out of council, and we end up, or from central government, we end up doing a significant amount of work about our, around that where our position is with our um, 
rates going forward, which just makes me a little nervous, I guess. Hi. Um, LTP um, will start in 1 July 2024 and we'll be working on next year. Um, the biggest one is Three Waters, obviously. Um, other reform is around the Resource Management Act um, and what happens around that. It, um, that will be an operational cost and um, of course until we understand where, where, that, where it ends up, it, it will have an operational impact. There's no doubt about it, it will have an operational impact. But I, you know, you're talking about one or two kind of um, uh, full-time equivalents rather than a you know, significant change. Um, I can't think of any other it's probably the work on all the different reforms from the staff itself that we're struggling to keep up with, and we're not alone. I might rephrase my thinking on that one at, the, at, a, at a later stage. So thank you. It could, of course, go the other way. I've, I've spoken of the negative one with far rates, but the government's had a history in the last two years of suddenly doling out fairly large sums of money to keep people happy. So the tranche one, tranche two, tranche two funding, and um, the no worse off funding, all of those better off fundings, you know, we didn't fully anticipate. So until an election, who knows what the government will want to do to keep people happy. Um, perhaps I, I would add, if I may, um, that this week uh, I've received an email to confirm Oh, sorry, last week I received an email to confirm uh, that Council's application for better off funding was approved in principle for the projects that we had requested. Um, so a big part of that, um, just under two million, was regarding Tai Happy um, Town Hall. Uh, whilst that's exciting, uh, I still have a contract which I've draft received um, this week that I'll need to go through to make sure that um, Council's aware of its obligations within that funding. Um, and um, that will be presented as part of annual plan. So no work is starting on any of those initiatives until 1 July next year. So all of that will sit into, well, currently I'm proposing for it to sit into uh, the annual plan. So you'll see a, um, uh, a, a big number coming in, but a commensurate number going out. Thank you. Any further discussion? Can I ask for the um, member for this report, please? Proceed to this report. Councillor Car Carkin, seconded Councillor Carter. And then we've got the second re recommendation is reading up there. Oh, carried. Right. All in favour? Against, right. carried. So, recommendation two. It'd be moved. Councillor Wilson. Councillor Loudon. All in favour? Right. <laughs> Against, carried. Moving right along. Page 48, item 9.4, the QV report. Please thank Sam for his report. Is there anything you'd like to point out there? Yeah, I'll introduce it if I may, thank you. So committee members will recall that previously we've had a five or six page report, formal report that QV have provided us that we've attached to the uh, introduction paper. They're transitioning into a new reporting model that's not been finalised yet. So you'll see that what we've been able to obtain for the end of November is different and much briefer than previously. And um, we're working with QB to see how we can develop a suitable replacement for what they used previously did provide us. So it's a scaled down version of the fire report. Any questions?
So I have a motion for receipt of the report, please. Councillor Carter, seconder. Councillor Wong, all in favour against Kerry. Report uh, number, item number 9.5 is the annual report 21-22 progress update. Any discussion on that? <coughs> Can I have a mover then that that report be received? Councillor Wilson. Seconded Councillor Loudon. All in favour? Against carried. We're the biggest item on, on our agenda today. Item number 9.6. Uh, the, the paper is going to be presented again at Council this afternoon. Uh, we will we'll have all the discussion here because uh, Mr. Toomes will not be available at Council this afternoon. So, those changes to the 22 23 writing budget. Any questions? Discussion? Just, just one for me. Um, when we look at these um, proposed changes, and, and we're shifting works out for it. Do we discuss that with the contractors themselves? Yeah, you know, with regards to the availability to see if it meets within the time frame. The suppliers, or am I in the wrong space here? Because you know, we're proposing these changes and we're deferring these work programs. <laughs> but do these, do these deferred work programs align with what are realistic expectations? Right, one on that one. Here's Alina now. Tell me if I'm not. Um, we would, a, yeah, we yeah. would. We would talk about the, the current budget. When it comes to the next um, package of work, there's obviously, I think next year, we are tendering out the maintenance contract as a total again. So that will be then the conversation with that group. But any deferred work is still part of our program. So the program is being made by the roading engineers and it keeps being reviewed. So just like Peter was saying that there were some priorities that changed, for example, because a road is actually deteriorating faster than they were hoping for it to deteriorate. Sometimes you just have to change that, that program around and they have very regular catch-ups with Higgins to make sure that it all fits within their program and that goes for emergency works as well. So all these things that pop in from the left and the right, they kind of try to work with the contractor to make sure that the program still there's still constant work going on when they can do the work so that there's no downtime as such. Just, just think that, that, I mean, it sounds great that that's, those questions are had. I'm just thinking about the reality of getting some of these things completed um, within our, with our budgets and, and costs. I guess when it comes to the new contract that is going to be negotiated next year, we know that there's some backlog to deal with and then you can actually work with the contractor make sure that they actually have the staff resource for this job. So there's the advantage of that being able to renegotiate these um, programs makes it easier. <coughs> Worship. Yeah. Um, as I said earlier, Council, you, you are the decision makers in terms of the asset management plans um, for all things, whether it's parks and reserves or road. So where do I think that probably council should, cons what council should consider is possibly even levels of delegation that sit outside of the governors. If you're going to bring something very substantial that might be in year nine, 10, or whatever, or a year of an LTP, um, if it is substantial in nature, council should approve it. It should be notified to us and council approve it. Um, and that would give council the right to be able to say, well, it is, might be your priority, but it may not be the priority of council. Um, that's, that's why you have these asset management plans that come to council for approval. Um, I 
guess um, you would also have the right to say, well, if you're going to bring in something that is further out in the LTP, what are you going to drop or delay to offset it? And this was sort of brought to my attention because I looked at the, all the road markings that have been put on the road out of Tutnui Road towards B and C dams, which would indicate to me as a layman that there is going to be very substantial impact on that road. Um, and the council do nothing about it. It doesn't sit within um, the LTP documents that were presented to us or the asset management plans or the annual plans. Questions? Yes, Councillor Lowry. Question, like writing is for shared services with Manitou, um, do we have knowledge of where Manitou is at with their roading program and um, is there going to be a juggle and a fight for, for resources with Manitou um, if the resources are um, limited because of our present situation? Um, do we know what's happening over there? and with their roading program? Don't know. We can ask if you want to get back to you on this. The way that it is currently managed is that the, the program planning and the contract, the high level contract management is done by John Jones um, for the, in, in the Manawatu District Council, but for both councils. Yep. And the actual design work and the, the operational side of things is actually done locally. So we have a team that is sitting in King Street that yeah. is solely doing yeah. RDC work. So they're not actually doing any of the MDC work. Yeah. So in that space, they have separated it out with staff for MDC work and for RDC work so that we, we're not competing in yeah. that sense. Just the high level management, there's a lot of benefits actually from doing it together sometimes. Okay. Um, so that's where the difference is. Councillor Carter. If I may, um, question for Adina or the CE. With contractors who help our units being the parks and reserves, um, how do you get on for the contractors who aren't fulfilling their position of be it no staff or whatever and aren't actually doing the contracting? I'm not sure I understand the question. Right, there is an area that hasn't been attended to in the way of mowing lawns. And I understand it's through the contractor um, lack of staff. How do we get on to those sort of things? Uh, do we have any clarity from council? Uh, I, I mean, mm. I, I, I'm, I'm blindsided by the mm. particular example you've given. I, I don't know the example, and forgive me, but I don't know from whom you've received that information, but it's not from me. And I'd encourage you to, to seek the source of truth from me in the first instance. Thank you. Anything else on this report? Um, no, sorry. Uh, the main reasons for the deferment of capital and expenses is lack of ability to get the work done. And and the emergency events taking the resources uh, to address okay. them, yeah. yeah. So there's, and COVID and... Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and some, sorry, in the weather as well. Like I know that it seems like a weird mm -hmm. excuse, but this year has been such a wet weather. Don't wet worry, we've a lot of farmers here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, oh, just kind of supplementary. Um, and, but works will get prioritised as of need. Not, you know, you're not going to fill a couple of potholes down. Yeah, the, the, but you'll reseal Kakariki Road because there's a pothole in there. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but there will be priority on major roading rather than little. Yeah, the, the main pieces. category that gets deferred is what's, what's known as low cost, low risk. Yeah. So that, that's the stuff that gets looked at last year, generally speaking. Yeah. Thank you. So I just think. Um, uh, in terms of, of the long-term plan, um, the roading team or its staff uh, through our shared services will provide uh, a series of projects um, and um, that are consistent 
with the funding that has been agreed by Wakotahi. So we can't do a road or reseal or anything like that without Wakotahi approving. And there are some metrics that sit behind that um, that uh, the, the, the technical people will assess a road and the condition of a road uh, and will um, uh, and, and that, that is typically the driver that Wakotahi will require in order for them to approve the funding. Um, now what happens in that period that, that Wakotahi have approved the FAR rate, the, the uh, financial assistance rate, you approve effectively the balance of that rate. Um, and where this differs from, for example, a Three Waters project, is that there are constant assessments of roading condition. And what we try to do is put in the long-term plan what we currently think, based on the condition of the road, that what Kotahi agree to. And that becomes our plan. And that becomes a plan that goes to our contractor for them to resource and we've just discussed ways in which that can be wobbled with weather and weather events and emergency work, etc. With the constant evaluation of those roads uh, and the program, there are some cases, like the one that His Worship was referring to, that project is going to be brought forward. It was identified in the long-term plan. It now needs to be brought forward because the analysis of it uh, is that in terms of the technical analysis, you know, the, the vehicles that run over it with all the measuring things have said, okay, there's been a lot of heavy truck uses on this road, we need to accelerate that, and it's now more important than the last one. So, as a subsidised road, Wakota, you approve it, um, and, and where I agree with his worship is that we should be bringing to you advice of where those changes take place via the Assets and Infrastructure Committee. Worship. As councillors, you, you have the responsibility for developing the long-term plan, which obviously is that document there. As part of that parcel, you also get the Road and Capital Works spread 21-24. Um, sorry, 2024, 21-2024. to I just can't find any reference to this work and even coming today, I can't find any reference to the scope of work in terms of the amount that's being brought forward. And that's just my concern. I'm operating in the dark. It's not sitting in our LTP, it's not sitting in our annual plan, and it's not sitting in the capital program as far as I can see it. So that's just what I want to understand. Just to clarify, you mentioned the word brought forward, but with this paper's deferring to future years, it's not bringing anything forward. The Tootnay Road work. Oh, okay, so I'll, I'll it's brought okay. forward, Sorry. and I don't okay. know whether it is a $10,000 job or whether it's a $10 million job. Obviously, it's not $10 million, but if it's a substantial sum, what drops out? That's, that's the issue that I'm trying to raise. Yeah, and I mean, um, as we Worship brought it to my attention yesterday, I've had it confirmed verbally that it was in the long-term plan, although not in the 21-24, but in the long-term plan, which is a 10-year plan. Um, so I just need you to satisfy as Worship where it was, um, and we've got staff working on that now. Just add one, to add one thing would be that when, when I spoke to staff about why this work is being done now, mm -hmm. that their commentary was that the road at the moment has deteriorated faster and to repair the same pitch when it was actually programmed in like two or three years, it will cost us a lot more. So what they are trying to do when they are changing the program is actually to be more efficient and to do a really good job for us. Um, they have a good record of getting a lot of money from Waka Kotahi for us. So I think that's um, from my point of view, there's actually a lot of trust in the way they run their programming and how they run their scheduling. Um, and so we can give you more detail on where exactly it's set. I can come back with that if that's what's required. Um, just a clarification. I have, I have no issue with this. I just want to know the scale and, and the reasons and why, because 
that I haven't been clearly indicated to. Thank you. Well, I think no, I'll, well, I don't know if I've missed something, but I can't see any reference to Dunoy Road in this report. I may, Madam Chair, we've diverted completely away from yeah. the board. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, I thought, oh, I'm reading through it. Where's Dunoy Road on here? Yeah. And there's no mention about bringing capital works forward in the report. No, um, I may, and so as I said, we've diverted in conversation from um, the paper. Yeah. Um, what his worship has asked for is information regarding when there are movements. Um, what I'm trying to give is a view of how those movements occur, and they're, they're much more dynamic. There, they are technically based. Um, um, assessments of the dy dynamic nature of how we move things and delay things um, and they can only be done with the approval of Waka Kotahi because they're the, one, the principal funders for it and so what we are aiming to do is make sure that where those movements occur and, and to use as worships with as significant ones um, we, we make sure that, that you're, you're advised of that. Um, this is an intentional thing. You can understand the dynamism of, of the environment in terms of you never can predict what vehicles are using what roads and what weather is occurring and what's happening in the sub uh, floor of the, of the road, but also prevents pet projects being, being, uh, uh, um, being conducted. And that's why we, have, we do still have um, unsubsidised roading budget, which is for you to consider, which doesn't have Wakotai attached to it. And that, that um, we can we can fund and do ourselves. So, uh, okay. So hence why we're talking about deferral of capital and operating budgets for in this report because that's completely to do with us. And no Waka Kotahi input. Yes. Um, and so, then so, the ones that and uh, his worship's talking about is Waka Kotahi, so we don't have much influence on that at all. Is, you, is that what you're saying? Would you like to answer that? Um, so this report uh, is a, effectively a supplementary um, report that started in September prior to, to this training. And that was um, answering the question, what is really our doability for our capital program this year? And when we presented it in September, we said we will not be able to achieve what we thought and what we told the public last year we would achieve. And here is an early indication of the reasons why. So our budget essentially hasn't changed, our commit, but, but the doability is, as our governors, you're now aware, that report in September didn't include roading. And so this is the subsequent report to that, which said now our capital program, which is made of lots of three waters and et cetera, and, and our roading. Now we've re-evaluated the roading and the doability of our roading. And this paper seeks to advise that whilst we were hopeful of getting a contractor to do the work that's been building up because that contractor has been diverted to emergency works and has been impacted by COVID, this is how we are planning to, to catch up. And it's a so it's impacted our capital doability effectively. And, and so sort of the conversation, so if, if I could refocus just onto that, that's the purpose and the decision we're asking of council for this paper. Uh, Your Worship, does you want to comment further? Uh, Councillor Wilson. I'd just like to say thanks for getting onto a significant project that obviously needs to be undertaken and let's just get on and get it done. I'm sure they didn't wake up this morning and flip a coin to say which road will we do today. Um, let's let's get it. There's a need for it. It's a significant piece of road, so let's get it done. Thank you. Awesome. Long. Um, under the recommendations, can I ask these um, amendments are all um, on on the long term plan or on the, there's no there's no alteration to the you know, the long term plans. So just to hear other please. Recommendations to the further budgets. No, it's taking it from one particular year and phasing into future years, yeah. So, yeah. So there's no alteration to the, to the, um, no, no. We're no. to the work. It's, it's not, yeah, okay. Councillor Wilson. 
like to move them as a block one, two, and three, that we approve A to receive. Uh, yeah, page 52 is the recommendation for this particular paper. The afternoon Sorry. recommendations are the ones you're referring to. Thank you for your enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, foresh I'll foreshadow that recommendation for this afternoon. Right. I'll be happy in the spirit of his worship's request for information, which I support, but for council to take, my staff to take out, uh, an action mm -hmm. to report back to council on significant deviations to um, our roading um, works. Uh, so our, our elected members are aware of, the, of, the, of those changes. Thank you, Big. So just be with that. Sorry, it was me saying all actions should be. Oh, great, thank you. Oh, sorry, Councillor Carton. Um, I'd like to move that the report be received. Thank you. Seconder, please. Second. Councillor Moore. All those in favour? Against? Carried. Um, Good. Item 9.7, public feedback to council, November 2022. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm just happy to take it as read. And if there's any questions, I'm happy to provide a response. Just a, a comment that, um, in my experience, any score that lands above sort of 85 is outstanding. So to see 96, 90, 89, 86 is fantastic. So well done. Um, in one of the comments, um, they mentioned that the person walked into the office here, I think, and said it seemed to be not they didn't feel included because it was of the window and things. Can't find the comment ever. Page um, 64, was it? Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, Sixty-four. Yes, there is, is it? Yeah. yeah. Um I can understand that by walking in here and, and I see what they mean. Um is there anything that you know what's it? Well, I, I would suppose the um Taibi office thing. The are sitting right there with you, which may not be good for COVID, but um, I can understand perhaps what they what what that person felt. Um, is there any other comments that might? Yeah, you know? I can provide a bit of clarity because mm. I did have a chat with the um, team leader out there. Um, this was one person's view. Mm. Um, and the staff assured me that they were not waiting 10 minutes to be served, that, um, that it was a slight exaggeration, that they definitely acknowledged them, but they were all busy on phone calls, but the time would have been only a couple of minutes. Oh, yeah, okay, that's fine. It's just, just about the, the, high, the high chairs and the back that's behind. So recently we actually um, <laughs> have revamped that area to to do exactly the opposite of what this is saying, to make it more welcoming and so that before the staff was sitting behind dividers, <coughs> I've got a few specs there now, but that's for obvious reasons, secu um, security as well as hygiene reasons. But the staff themselves worked hard to design the front layout as it is now with the manager out there. Um, and they're all much happier with how it is. They feel like as soon as somebody comes in the door, they can see them now. They're not looking up um, from dividers, they're able to respond better. So in the staff's view, that um, redesign out there works work really well. That's the main thing. Yes. Um, mm. yeah. Cutting um, it out. I'd like to congratulate the, the staff. Uh, the vibe out there is very good, and, um, and certainly the results here are outstanding. So well done. Great. Councillor Carter. Yes, I concur with the comment um, regarding Jody and Matthew for the um, Tamara PE. They are the, the key to that place and they make it run really well. Um, but usually you blink out 
um, really that isn't um, nice to be read, but it's under a good comment. What was what's the reason behind that? Um, that that's one of the ironies because it oh, definitely wasn't a good comment. Oh, I see. Yes. They, 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 they chose um, probably an incorrect category. <laughs> 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 Quite long. There, there's also. Um, uh, times when people are complimented on their looks, for example, or something like that, and it's just inappropriate. Oh, I don't, you know, which yeah, some might find uh, we, we would defer, we remove those kind of comments as well. So, does this very positive feedback go back to these individuals, and especially when it's been brought to the council table? Yes, reinforced. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you very much for that. They like hearing that too. <laughs> 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 yeah, as well for you. Yes, yeah. sure, sure. I thought it was a bad I'd like a move for receipt of that report, please. Thank you, Councillor Kalkin. Seconded, Councillor Nowden. All in favour? Against carried. So, on that note, we can call the meeting closed. Thank you. Thank you very much.